Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for coming back. So we are now in the next session. So now we have the Mexico panel. Uh, so we, we brought uh, leaders from industry, government, and academia in this panel, and it's going to be very interesting. And the moderator is uh, Luis Soxen. He is a venture builder here at MIT, uh, AI my plus health, and uh, is, um, he, he tries to create ventures at MIT, and he did his PhD at MIT as well on mechanical engineering. And he's going to be taking care of the Mexico panel. He's from Mexico as well. And I'll let him uh, continue with, with, the, with the dynamics of the panel. Well, Luis, welcome. Thank you. Um, I'll take a seat now. Can you hear me OK, everyone? Great, thank you. So um, I'm super excited to be here today. Uh, the panel that we have uh, here with us now, which I'll present in a minute, it's uh, extraordinary individuals. Uh, the, the way we're gonna conduct this panel is gonna be very dynamic. I'm gonna spend just uh, one minute uh, introducing you know, a, each one of the, of the panelists. They are gonna sit down, please, in, in the order I, I call them. And, uh, and from there, we're gonna take a couple uh, of moderated questions that I'll drive. Uh, those, just for you to know, have actually been compiled from the community, Mexican community that I've been approaching through the last couple of weeks to really pinpoint the questions that would be most interesting and effective for everyone. So without any ado, um, I welcome here uh, Dr. Enrique Zucar, please. Um, Enrique Zucar, as, as he's coming here, uh, is, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Suke is senior researcher scientist for the Instituto Nacional de Astrofisica, Optica y Electronica, the INOAE, in Mexico. He holds a PhD in computing from the Imperial College, a master's in, a master's in electrical engineering from Stanford, and a bachelor's uh, in electronics from uh, Tec de Monterrey, my alma mater, too. <laughs> he holds uh, over 4,200 citations. He has been recipient of the National Prize uh, of Science from the Mexican President in 2006. So again, please. Uh, um, uh, help me welcome him. Uh, then uh, the next panelist is Jose Alonso Huerta Cruz, please. Take the stage. <laughs> Dr. Alonso is president of the National Network of Science and Technology Councils in Mexico. Uh, he has a business uh, degree from La Salle University and a master's in applied public administration uh, from ITESM. He has also got a lot of different trainings in Mexican public administration from Harvard Kennedy School. So thank you so much for coming here. Uh, our next researcher, her name is Margarita Sordo Sanchez. Please uh, help me welcome her. <laughs> Doctor, Dr. Sordo is, uh, is, uh, is a medical informatics researcher and instructor at the general, of general medicine at the Brigham and Women's Hospital here uh, in Boston and Cambridge, uh, as well as uh, instructor in Harvard Medical School. Uh, he holds a PhD in computer science and artificial intelligence from the Instituto Tecnológico Autónomo de México, ITAM. He has accumulated over 1,400 citations, and her research includes artificial intelligence, uh, knowledge representation, and clinical decision support. She also holds a, uh, a master's in science in artificial intelligence from the University of Edinburgh, and, um, uh, and a bachelor's degree, sorry, from ITAM, and the PhD was from, um, from University of Sus Sussex. Um, all right, our next speaker is Gustavo Pérez, please. Thank you. <laughs> Gustavo is CEO of NDS Cognitive Labs, a leading, company in, uh, uh, a leading company in cognitive computing and AI technologies uh, dedicated to helping global businesses accelerate the, der der uh, the digital transformation. He was born in Mexico City, has a bachelor's degree in management and information systems, and a master's degree in business administration from the Tec de Monterrey. Uh, he has been also educated in different courses at Harvard, Stanford, and Singularity University. So thank you so much for coming. Um, Ernesto Sanchez Proal is our next uh, speaker, uh, sorry, panelist. Please, thank you. welcome. Uh, Mr. Sanchez is Minister of Economic Development at Jalisco State Government in Guadalajara. He holds a bachelor's in electronics engineering from the University Jesuita de Guadalajara, ITESO and a master's in administration from Central Michigan University. Mr. Sanchez has also occupied senior level positions at various automobile, 
industrial and energy focuses, uh, focused companies uh, in Mexico and abroad. So thank you so much uh, for joining us. And finally, uh, our last panelist is Miguel Gonzalez Mendoza. So please uh, help me receive him. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Gonzalez holds a bachelor's in electronics from Tecnológico de Monterrey, a master's and a PhD degree in artificial intelligence from the Institut Nacional de Science Appliqué in Toulouse, France. Uh, his interests are in machine learning, data management, and computer vision. He's also a uh, uh, former president of the uh, Artificial Intelligence Association in Mexico. Um, sorry if I misspelled that. But, uh, <laughs> great. So thank you so much again, and please uh, uh, help, me, help me receive the, the panelists again. <laughs> All right. So the way we're going to conduct this is um, so. Uh, now that we, you know all the extraordinary individuals that we have here in the table, I actually want to start with a fairly provocative question. And I'll, uh, I, I hope you can all take like, you know, one minute to, to respond on that. So uh, the first question that someone actually uh, asked me when, when I was collecting this question is, OK, so given all the challenges in, you know, social injustice, corruption, you know, uh, uh, capacity to actually serve a variety of needs in Mexico, the first question that arises for many, many people in the region is actually, is there even a need to implement you know, in artificial intelligence solutions in Mexico? Like, could we not improve without it? Or why, why, why are we here? I guess like the question, right? It's like, why? <laughs> so uh, if you can take just one minute of why and yeah. You start? Yeah, let, let's, let's go this way and then we'll, okay. we'll yeah. OK. Well. First of all, thank you for the invitation. Uh, and I think uh, maybe the question could be, what will happen if Mexico does not enter into AI? Put it in another way. And, and I think it could be very, very bad for Mexico because Mexico's economy currently is basically based on, on cheap labor. We have a lot of manufacturing mainly car manufacturing and other industries. But AI could change this rapidly. So automation can make uh, foreign companies not much interested in moving to another place with cheap labor if they have robots or automation. So I think Mexico needs to be thinking of the next step. And I think the next step is to make a knowledge-based economy, develop and use AI technology more extensive and think of another type of economy more based on knowledge than on cheap labor. Thank you, Enrique. Uh, first of all, I want to uh, say thank you to the organizers and congratulations for uh, setting up this big initiative and put in the public agenda uh, one uh, team uh, very uh, important in order to organize the efforts in the region for promote the intelligence, uh, or the artificial intelligence. Uh, respect the, the question, I think there, of course, there are a need. Uh, I think it's urgent that Mexico starts to uh, create more initiatives for use and take advantage of this technology. Mexico faces a lot of challenge. Uh, challenge. And I think the best way to face it uh, successfully is with uh, using the technology, the knowledge, and in a special way, the artificial intelligence offer a lot of opportunities in order to solve a lot of problems that we have if we have the conditions for uh, develop a national uh, initiative for use uh, artificial intelligence in different uh, sectors and regions of our country. Great, thank you. Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, I think well, I would like to add to what they, they just said. I, I think, yes, we need artificial intelligence. However, there are basic needs that need to be addressed first. So we need to start you know, from the bottom up, have a solid foundation you know, with a concerted effort between the, all the different stakeholders, and by that I mean not only the, the, the government, private industry, healthcare, education. So if we all get together into that 
Yes, keep, keeping um, an, inf an informed and knowledge-based approach to where we want to go and have a vision. I think that that's important that we have a, that we have a vision as, as to where we want to go as a country. But at the same time, we cannot forget you know, the, the, the urgent needs that exist in all different sectors. And the important thing would be that whatever we develop and, how, and wherever we go, that we bring all the country together. So what comes out of all these implementations of, of uh, policies and, and projects and innovation in, in healthcare really you know, percolate, that, that trickle down you know, to the general people so we can improve you know, and move that baseline that it, right now it's really low unfortunately, but we can move that up. So we, so we get, as a country, in a situation where we move from being a manufacturing country into an innovation and creation country that where all the things that we develop in Mexico can be shared to the rest of the world. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for, for the invitation. Thank you very much for all of you that are here. Thank you very much for the people that might be watching online. Um, I'm really surprised that many times academia, government, and uh, companies don't really realize what's going on. Imagine we, had the, we have right now the opportunity to, to start a new era of economy, of how we build society and business. And we're still struggling to, to mix some topics that are from the past. Uh, today we're talking a panel about Mexico. So I think this is the largest. Uh, we just got the free trade agreement ratified. This is great. But AI plus the free trade agreement we have with, with US and with Canada is going to be two of the most important things that are going to change Mexico and North America for the next couple of uh, centuries, probably. So how we tackle this problem? How do we make space for a country like Mexico that is split? You know, that we always say there is two Mexico. The half of it is developed, and it has great features, and half of it uh, has been left behind. This is the chance we have to take this other half that has been um, forgotten to, to bring them on board and generate a lot of wealth and change the game for Mexico, for families, societies, academia, for everybody. So um, it's great to be here and, and hopefully we'll have a great discussions about this. Ernest. Thank you. Um, thanks for, uh, for inviting uh, us from Jalisco. Uh, just uh, briefly, uh, a little bit about our state because probably some of you know Mexico but don't know, do know Jalisco. Jalisco is one of the biggest economies in the country. We have a very diversified economy from uh, agro-industry all the way to tourism, to tourism advanced manufacturing and also software development. Uh, we, uh, we are the first state that had uh, a Ministry of Innovation uh, instituted in the, in the state and uh, we base a lot our economic growth in talent. Having said that about AI, uh, we believe that in order to remain competitive, uh, not only in the country, but in the world, we need to adopt this type of, of technologies. Uh, the same thing happened with uh, uh, the digital transformation of the industry, Industry 4.0, uh, digital commerce, and all these trends that in the past impacted a lot of the economy and are still impacting. Uh, we believe that, that AI will uh, certainly impact, and probably in, in a deeper way, all economic activities across across the board. Uh, this also will bring some some challenges. We understand that automation of the processes, as happened with the automation of the industry, uh, generated uh, in some instances uh, a reduction of, of employment. I mean, uh, uh, job losses. But we also believe that AI, if it can be the problem, can be also the solution by applying that. To, uh, to education and also applying that to social programs such as, as healthcare. So uh, we are here because we, are, we want to embrace AI. We also uh, have already uh, 
instituted an office within the Ministry of Innovation. We have a specific office dedicated to AI as part of the state government. And we have a project uh, funded by the IDV with the uh, Tech de Monterrey, uh, which is starting to create a, an AI hub in the state of Jalisco. So we have institutional programs already started because we're embracing this, this new uh, technology in order to bring uh, more benefits to our society and, and remain competitive in the world stage. Fantastic. Yes, thank you. So um, just to, um, well, at the same time, we have the World Economic Forum meeting right now. And I think what is important to, 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 to also take into account is that uh, just taking the basic requirements, Margarita, uh, at all, and some other the, 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 the issues we have to take into account. I think that on, on the main pillars of the economy, we have the basic requirements, health, um, education, institutional coordination, so on and so forth. But also the efficiency market, uh, we have in an in, in internal way. Um, and, but also the business sophistication. These were uh, more or less the three main elements of the, the economy. But since two or three years, we put a, a fourth one, and it is human capital. I don't know the word. Uh, uh, I don't want so much to use this 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 term. It's, it's more the, the talent development more than human capital. But what is important is that if we invest as in Mexico. In a, in, a, in, a, in a way in which we, of course, take into uh, take a, a more a stronger uh, group of basic requirements, particularly institutional credibility, because uh, in, in Mexico our institutions have the lowest rate on the OCDE. So, but uh, taking uh, taking everything, in, uh, of course, on the on the on, on the side, I think. The, the, the main opportunity in Mexico is this in the institutional coordination, the credibility, but taking uh, the force with, within people. I think this is one of the most uh, uh, important opportunities we have right now. Okay, thank you so much. So I, I think this is a great segue to, to actually ask the, the second sort of provocative question, which uh, to all of you, in fact, it's um, if you would have to choose, and this is the question, if you will have to choose one single uh, thing that you will implement tomorrow, uh, or like if you have all the economic capacity, like a, all the resources to do that, if there was one change that you would push with all your heart in Mexico so that Mexico becomes uh, AI enabled in the next 10 years or you know, really takes advantage of the benefits that the promise that AI uh, will deliver, what would that be? I think as some people say in the, the first panel, I think education should be the critical aspect, but mainly at the elementary and high school levels. Prepare kids to have the computing AI skills. So AI well, specific skills. Yes, well, in general computer, what they call computational thinking, the basic skills of computing, start teaching them since primary. Actually, in, I'm also, president of the Mexican Academy of Computing, and we have been developing material in Spanish for teaching computational thinking. And I think also more specific AI skills at the basic level, I think that could be the best investment Mexico can make Perfect. for the future. Thank you, Enrique. Jose? Um, yeah, well, I, I think uh, artificial intelligence is becoming a general proposed technology. Mm -hmm. For that reason, I think in the, the impact uh, that will be in the next years is practically in all the sectors. Of course, education, healthcare, finance, I think uh, probably uh, will be the first sectors that uh, will be impacted in more stronger way. But uh, I think more than uh, talk about a specific sector, I want to uh, put attention in a specific uh, segment of our economy. The small and medium companies, uh, there are a lot of opportunity in order to increase uh, their competitiveness and give, us, uh, and give uh, them uh, more tools uh, to compete with the biggest company that uh, traditionally uh, have access to the 
more sophisticated uh, technology, um, have more uh, conditions for compete, not only in the country, uh, uh, but uh, around the world. And I think the small and um, medium companies that uh, start to use and take advantage of this uh, technology uh, probably can uh, compete in a better way in the next years. So this looks like policies that targets this middle, uh, or, 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 or are you referring to funds? So like what is yeah, the uh, Policies, and after the policies, uh, probably go the funds, uh, because our economy in Mexico is uh, integrated in the most percentage for uh, small and um, medium companies, right. and they uh, have not all the uh, tools, all the skills, uh, all the elements for compete, and I think if we can establish some kind of a strategy for give, give them this uh, opportunity to use, develop, and take advantage of uh, artificial intelligence, probably they uh, can impulse their growth and, of consequence, the economy of the, of the so country. Education, support to PIMES, and Margarita. Um, yeah, actually, yeah, I was going to say education, too. Um, I think, well, I'm a little bit bias towards healthcare because that's what I do for, for a living. Um, however, I, I, I believe that it's important to have a you know, solid uh, educational programs that like uh, Dr. Zucker said, you know, start from elementary school. So people, yeah, so, so people lear learn things, you know, they, they, they get the, the, the necessary tools in terms of uh, knowledge, experience, and exposure from, you know, very early age. So as, as, they, as they move to life, they can not only apply what they learn, but also learn new things. So when you bring artificial intelligence in, into, the, the, into the mix, I see that, you know, up here. You know, but that, like I said before, there are very basic needs that need to be satisfied in order to have a, a solid foundation upon which we can build you know, knowledge. So when, when we bring, uh, when things get disrupted by artificial intelligence or by any other you know, kind of technology or change in the, in the, in the, the, the mechanisms for uh, producing things, so uh, people can can have the, the elements to learn and adapt. But if but if you don't if if you don't have those elements, whatever disruption you bring into the mix is going to displace a lot of people. And I think that that's well to me that's a big no no. You know it should be as technology evolves, also people need need to evolve and adapt. But we have to provide them with the necessary tools so they can be able to do that. You know, and, well, and, and not only adapt to survive, but adapt and contribute. So, so you, maybe you can interpret that as a, a framework for the nation to move their workforce to, you know, kind of like to, to move in that direction also, so that they are not um, kind of like left behind. Yes, and, and, yeah, and, and, and an example I gave, you know, but, uh, you know an, a, a previous, um, invitation was because people were asking well how how do I see if, if, if I was worried that artificial intelligence was going to be a bad thing and the example I, I you know came to mind and I, and I think it applies now is what, what happened when 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 we got uh, you know to use calculators you know at least you know when, when I was in elementary school there were no calculators you know, towards the end of elementary school and into high school, I got my, you know, first calculator that you can turn on for maybe 10 seconds so you don't run out of battery. You know, but, but the important thing with that, it was, it was not that by having a calculator, we're, we're not going to be able to perform, you know, the additions and subtractions and multiplications. We needed to, to know how to do that, but then the calculator became a tool that allowed us to do that in a better way, maybe, maybe faster, but if we didn't know how to make an, an, an addition, you know, if we, if we, didn't, if we, if we don't know that two plus two is four, you know, in most cases, <laughs> right? 
uh, then we, thought we can have the most wonderful calculator and we enter two plus two and we get a number and if we don't know if that number is right, well, that technology, it's of no use. So for me, it's important that we, that we have you know, the education, that we have the knowledge and that, that people know how to use that and then incorporate the technology just as, as an augmentation of you know, the, 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 of, of that knowledge. I like that. Uh, we, we'll follow up on that. So, um, Gustavo. Well, um, while all of you were making great points, I was thinking that I'm very lucky in the sense that um, I started uh, my company with my brother as my partner, NDS Cognitive Labs. And um, we, we, we had this dream about uh, putting Mexico on the map as a player on the IT arena. And um, last decade was uh, mainly dominated by, besides US companies, Indian companies mainly. And we learned to work with them. But then uh, the last six years, we've been spending uh, all our energy, our passion, uh, building uh, our own practice for cognitive computing. So. We opened up the office in California, and then we started hearing about all this cognitive computing, machine learning. And at that point, I, I really never heard about it. So uh, we already have a couple of clients there. We needed to do some projects. So uh, we flew back to Mexico, and we say, OK, we need data scientists. Uh, I'm a professor at Tech of Monterrey as well. So I poked around. There was uh, something there. Uh, I had to ask the, the, the campus I teach to create an optative uh, course so I could teach something that was being developed at that moment in California, that uh, there was no uh, documentation. Uh, we had to, to roll out a couple of cloud projects, but there was no documentation, not even in English. So we started, uh, first challenge, uh, there was no documentation, there was no training, there was no clear understanding of uh, what's this cloud thing was going to play with artificial intelligence and machine learning. So all these challenges we, we face in terms of um, how do we speed up the training? So we had to create a YouTube channel and a website, all training free, because even when, when there was some material, um, we needed to target it to, to Mexican industry. Um, then we, we were, as soon as we had a couple of guys trained on this, uh, they start, uh, the, the big companies here start uh, uh, recruiting them to go to work to Seattle and to California. So um, how does a mid-sized company, mainly based in Mexico, can make a difference? And in the last five years, we, we learned all the challenges about financing because many times we compete with global companies that have all the financing in the world. So um, there's a way. So we're lucky because uh, we, we found out that with passion, uh, we've been able to create a lot of great jobs in Mexico. And, and the, probably we, we have a great team, probably one of the most important practices in, in community computing, at least in Latin America. So uh, we've, we've enjoyed, we've suffered. So every time one of you talk about one of these things, we need more support in, from the banks, we need more support from the academia, we need more support from the government. And I really appreciate all, all this, uh, also the, the government and academia, because we need you, we need you guys. Because we, we cannot fight uh, uh, from, in, well, nobody can do this, but we cannot fight from Mexico in this thing that moves so fast without your help. So I just wanted to share a little bit about our story that uh, I think we 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 be growing, we be, uh, becoming successful in something that might be sound crazy five years ago, but it's possible. And uh, we've been winning projects to companies all over the world. So there's the talent in Mexico, so we can do it. Um, and and finally, um, hopefully we can talk later on about the, the hubs, because I think Mexico has enough size to become a hub for Latin America. But hopefully we can get this talk later because uh, it requires so much uh, to get so deep into the technology and into industry that we need to figure out how to partner up now that we have people from more Latin America. 
thank you very much. So, so if I can just summarize a, a couple of points, I just want to maybe this drives other discussions. So, my understanding here, when I hear you, is that the entrepreneurial drive that you had and the, the people around you had to build their own infrastructure sometimes and they, to solve their own problems. Do you think that could be something that Mexico needs that is not necessarily government oriented, but rather kind of like person oriented? Do you think more people in Mexico need to be more entrepreneurial like you did to drive this or, or not really? I think uh, for entrepreneurs in Mexico, it's a great moment. We've seen a lot of startups focusing because what happens is uh, everybody is reading about uh, success cases in California, New York, London, Tokyo. But come on, guys, there's a billion people who speak Spanish. And one of our main concerns is to build intellectual property to solve Mexican problems and problems from specific industries, financial services, and retail. Because if we don't take care of ourselves, nobody's going to take care of us. Um, the last, first time we implemented a chatbot for a uh, for a global bank with operations in Mexico, we realized that it doesn't matter which uh, natural language processing tool we used. It didn't really speak Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> it's sad. I know, I understand why you're laughing, it's mean. But you know, uh, they, so imagine talking about bias. If, uh, if we are going to rely on technologies that doesn't speak your language, What's let's, next? Let's loop on that in yeah. for sure. Great. So, uh, Ernesto, please. Uh, <clears throat> yes, well, uh, from uh, our point of view in, in Jalisco, we uh, believe that uh, the, probably the, the, the biggest impact in the short term will be in healthcare. Mm. Uh, I understand, we understand that the education will bring a lot of benefits in the, in the long term, it will take some time. It is absolutely a need. But uh, if I will put them in order, I will say initially healthcare, and by the way, we, are, we have already some emerging projects in healthcare by local universities. We have two of them just outside here, the from University of Guadalajara and uh, another one from the Panamericana University. And uh, as, uh, as Jalisco, we're supporting within the hub, the new hub that I mentioned initially, the AI hub, a project uh, of healthcare related to, to, uh, uh, to I, uh, uh, anomalies in the retina. So, healthcare will, will the first one with the short term impact. Of course, education in the long run, but also another one very important for us is security uh, in, in, in Mexico. So, security will be another one where, where AI could be uh, very, very useful. Uh, so, in, so, so, so we'll put them in order will be healthcare, security, and education. So security as an application, meaning kind of like AI to drive, kind of like to detect fraud, and or, or and you I mean know more like security of the data. That yeah. Is so I know this. This is sometimes against privacy that uh, was uh, very well covered in the previous panel. But uh, face recognition, patterns of behavior, and all that will be very useful to uh, uh, to try to prevent uh, 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 incidents of, of, of security in, uh, within Mexico and. Uh, so 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 before we actually move, uh, like Ernesto, for you uh, specifically, is still in this same topic. So what do you think the government of, uh, like the, your office is really, sort of, would you say has been the highlight that, that, that you would say, you know, that we have put all these efforts and seems to be like a great target uh, for driving kind of like this. My, my office is focused on increasing the, comp the competitiveness of the, of the businesses in Jalisco. Okay. So by taking a market approach, as was previously mentioned, and by relying on small and medium-sized companies that can, that can take this technology and develop them, develop the technology themselves, we don't need to have huge corporations. But with support from the government, by using the hardware that we can fund, that we are already funding with this, with this hub, uh, we, we can have an increase in this uh, level to ability to compete uh, in the world stage, as I was mentioned initially, and I believe that these small and medium-sized companies with a market orientation can develop these applications in healthcare, security, and at, the, at last in the education, last but not least, because it, was, it will have the long-term impact. So, so to me, that actually rings echoes to what Jose just said, about sure. like, you know, kind of like supporting the PIMAs and then let them be. Yes. Uh, so Miguel. Uh, uh, yes, just a few, few words. Just to, to talk about opportunities, we have to also to take into account if we are uh, talking about short-term, mid-term, or long-term actions. Uh, but it depends also on the 
TR levels we have, or the, index, the maturity levels we have on the, on, in specific sectors. So right now, in the short term, uh, we can have um, initiatives for marketing, the first, because this is one of the most um, uh, important sectors we have in Mexico, having the data, the data, everything. Then we have FinTech, mm. then we have um, some other markets, other like industrial ones like uh, automotive sector, airplanes, and so on and so forth. And finally, on, on the fifth term, it was, it was more on the educational side and some other government services. So FinTech, as well as, Tech. as uh, yes, of course, um, as, as marketing, uh, we, we have several opportunities in order to increase, of course, um, uh, the showcases for artificial intelligence in the short term. term. But uh, necessarily, just for, um, for the government, for example, I think if we have a, a spread uh, initiative in order to enhance all the data we have on the government side, because we have the data, not necessarily it is, it is uh, uh, available, if you want, <laughs> available <laughs> at, at certain levels. Once we close this gap, we will increase opportunities in order to, to, to have better impact on, the, on, on, on each sector. I, I like that, Miguel. So I, I guess just to rephrase what you say is like, you know, we have a couple of different data rich uh, sectors in Mexico that could yeah. be priorities to demonstrate that this actually has value. So just maybe by starting there and just showing that this is like. It's, know, it's already working, you yeah. know, and FinTech will, Gustavo can tell us about several examples, of course. But what is important is also, well, what, what do you want to do? And in order to touch, for example, the, the, the people uh, coming from uh, the poorest sectors, mm. to, to of course to take them into all these new activities, I think we can we can of course uh, uh, overtake several generations, you know, uh, in order, within our activities. Yeah. So uh, great point. So actually, let's let's use that as a starting point on on the creation of hubs and actually something that I believe some of you may agree, but uh, in my opinion. And, and I think it's the opinion of many that would share. Uh, AI, it's, you know, none of us can anticipate the future. No, none of us can say, you know, this is what's gonna happen tomorrow. I think what we can say is what's not gonna happen tomorrow, which is that it's gonna be the same. You know, Mexico has to change, has to evolve. And so the way it evolves, it's, you know, un uncertain, but we know it's gonna change. So in that context, um, so what is the role that hubs, that academia, that, Every single you know, aspect that you represent here, you know, NGOs, governments, academia, in your opinion, what is the role that the, the most powerful role that you, the, 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 the sector that you represent is going to do in these ecosystems and these hubs to develop uh, AI in Mexico? So actually, let's, let's just start from the middle out. Uh, towards there uh, with Margarita, and then okay. we'll look back here. That's okay, sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's fine. <laughs> um, well, I, I would say that, um, yeah, in, in, in healthcare right, right now in Mexico, it's, it's, there's a great opportunity with this new institute that is being created. So What's if, the name of the institute? Thank you, <laughs> Insabi. And <coughs> ask me what it means, because <laughs> then I will have to ask the people, the audience. Um, regardless of that, I think it 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 creates it it creates a, a great opportunity you know, to address, as I, as I've been saying, you know, urgent needs, but also to to plan and to look ahead. You know, identify a clear goal as to where, where, you know, that particular sector, and I'm and I'm focusing, you know, in, in um, government um, slash healthcare sector, but there's also private uh, hospitals in Mexico that could play a really good and an important role in this. So it 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 has it has it has to be something that it's. You know, the, a clear goal down the road, but with clear milestones. And something that I want to emphasize, and goes to what you, you were saying, is that we need a concerted effort. Because we cannot have innovators like, like him in Mexico, you know, working, you know, their fingers to the bone, comp competing with, you know, with big uh, transnational, you know, like, uh, 
monopolies almost, you know, the companies, you know, if in Mexico we don't support that, you know, I, I think that, and that's something that I, I've been seeing about, I, I, I've seen about the, the, the Chinese government. You know? They send their people out, you know, with, there are a lot of Chinese people here you know, studying and working at you know, top-notch institutions, hospitals, companies, and not only here in the US, you know, but all over the world. So they, they train, they learn, they, they, they create. And what, what do the, the, the government do? You know, they create opportunities in China for them to go back. They already, they, 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 they get the know-how from here because they work with the best in the US, you know? But then they have the opportunity to go back, they have the support, they, they have the space, they have the resources, you know, to apply all that knowledge that they, they have learned. So what happened? Well, that's why Ch China is where it is right now. You know, if we look back like 10, 15, 20 years ago, China was mostly a, a huge manufacturing country, and they, they have the vision to evolve, to, to use that, you know, to create the, the, the resources. They, they have, you know, the, the, the working people, they have, the, they have the, the income from selling, you know, all the Chinese goods that get all over the, the, the world. But then they, they are using that intelligently to bring back people, to give them the space, the resources, the support, you know, not only from the, from, well, over there probably is only the government, but it, it shouldn't, it doesn't need to be like that. It's like, you have your company, you are successful. So it's like, yes, from, from academia, from industry, from the government, from other entrepreneurs, people, everybody needs to chip in and help, and help each other because the vision is as a country, not as a small comp not as a small company, not not as an a, 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 a academic person or working in, in healthcare, uh, and, and not not as not not as little things. Is if we want to get somewhere, we want to get all together, you know, and, and use that. That's that's great. So actually, just before we continue on, and I'll repeat the question for everyone, uh, but. Uh, Something that I just was reading was that uh, Instituto Mexicano del Seguro Social IMSS just embarked actually in a $6.7 billion uh, investment to renew uh, a lot of the infrastructure. And it was actually incredible to me to, when I saw the report, there, there was no, it was all physical infrastructure. Like there was no digital infrastructure or like kind of like, kind of like plan to, you know, half of that or, you know, a portion of that into like, AI. so I don't know how much, uh, you know, someone in the panel may know about this, but like since we touch on the healthcare aspect of it, uh, what would you think it's, uh, you know, your opinion about that? Like uh, the fact that, you know. I, I think, well, yeah, I think it's important, but I, I, I'm going to start sounding like a broken record here, but because I think it's important, yes, to, to vision, you know, yeah, we, we need a, you know, like a strong infrastructure. If we, don't, if we don't have medication, we don't have physicians to treat people, we cannot think about you know, getting you know, top-notch technologies you know, in, in place if we don't have the basic services covered here. You know? if, if, if you go to any hospital here in the, in the US, well, you, you're gonna have a, a decent, you know, going from, from decent to you know, top-notch if you go to a, one of the Harvard uh, Medical School hospitals, Right, but then there's, there, there's, there's the basics are covered. So if we don't have that covered, I, I personally don't see, you know, any point in having like a great AI technology on top of <coughs> nothing. So being an AI researcher, I thought you were gonna say no. Yeah, IMS has to. Give yeah. Yeah. Well, so that's well, great. no, no I, I'm, and I'm, yeah, I'm an AI researcher, and and, and yeah, probably that, <laughs> that's what I'm saying is a contradiction. But but I I even in in the, in the work I I do, if if we don't ha if you don't have a solid foundation, if you don't have a solid understanding of what you need to do, you you're not gonna get that far. You know, and I th and I think that can apply to any other areas. Beautifully put. Mm -hmm. um, 
Actually, let's continue with um, Ernesto. So, uh, sorry, Ernesto. Uh, so, talking about the hubs that are in Jalisco, and then we'll move to uh, uh, kind of like, what do you think is the role that the government has in the creation of the of that, and then you know, kind of like, uh, you know, that that can feed into uh, in, into the entrepreneurial aspect here. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I think uh, <clears throat> we have two main roles. One is to, uh, as I mentioned, to support the development of the of the technology and its adoption by, by the companies in order to <coughs> uh, uh, be in a more competitive uh, position. But the other one is also to regulate. Mm -hmm. So we are authority in the government. We, we need to, to regulate, not over-regulate, but uh, uh, we, we need to somehow <coughs> control the markets. It, they do not, uh, uh, in this case, with this new uh, technology, if we let them run totally free, then we will enter the, uh, into some of the issues that were mentioned before, like uh, privacy and the, the use of the data to, to, uh, to uh, favor one specific industry, like insurance or like uh, financial, etc. So uh, <clears throat> on the one hand, to support, to, to provide grants for the development, etc. But we need to define very good policies uh, to regulate without uh, messing too much into, into the markets because we believe that uh, uh, our government should be working with the businesses and not against businesses uh, in the state of Jalisco. So uh, we don't want to be a, 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 an obstacle, but there needs, there needs to be uh, some, uh, some guidance and, and regulation. So I will say these two, two items. First, uh, the development uh, uh, through uh, uh, special programs that include grants and, and uh, special financing for, this, for these projects, but also clearly define <coughs> within the, the state law the, the, the limits of what can be done or not. Yeah, and I hope that the people in the audience that do AI in Jalisco or wants to do that in the region, like, you know, approach you with your, like, you know, to feed into that conversation. I think it's incredible. So, you know, great. And, and I agree with you. That, that regulation has to be, kind of like, you know, overseeing but not restrictive. Right. Uh, I think everybody will agree on that. So, uh, Gustavo, so, like, you know, kind of like online, so that, so, do you agree uh, that regulation should be applied with you? In, and then what's the role of the entrepreneurs to push that boundary and kind of like make that happen in those hubs for AI in Mexico? I'm just thinking about my answer because... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to uh, get into in trouble. <laughs> I think we need involvement, not uh, regulation. Interesting. Uh, we need to provide find ways to provide better feedback to the government. And we need to provide better ways of that feedback getting into the right person and executing uh, probably not the right time because governments, I definitely will move slower, but we need to become partners in a different way. Uh, I was, many times the answer for governments for innovation is building bureaucracy for dealing with innovation. It's interesting. Uh, and it needs to be done. Otherwise, how do you focus resources on that? But um, I think uh, we need to partner more with, with the ecosystem. Uh, I think, obviously, we need to, to make sure we don't run in separate lanes, uh, because many times we, we are in separate lanes. Uh, it's a commitment, like, uh, it should be more like a marriage, you know, like, uh, we need to make this thing work out, no matter what, because we have children and dogs, and, you know, uh, we need to have that kind of commitment to work with academia and with government. Uh, and, and I think it's, it's really important, and it's the only way we can, we can take this uh, opportunity to the next level. So, Miguel, as an academic and, you know, accomplished researcher and also kind of like, you know, involved in, a, in uh, uh, professional associations around AI in Mexico. What do you think is your role uh, or their role of people that you represent? Yeah, of course. Um, I think for, um, for the last 40 years, let's say, uh, we have uh, worked as um, a sector, academia, as some associations in order to accomplish some key performance indicators, let's say. Because maybe it could be a number of papers, a number of students, graduate students, and so on and so forth. But not necessarily uh, all these KPIs are w very well aligned uh, in, a, uh, let's say, for the wellness of, of the entire society. 
And that's why uh, academia um, not necessarily talk so much with the, the industry, okay, or the government. What we need right now is to, 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 to revise this. In fact, we are revising this, and let's hope it will be for, for, for better, not for worse, uh, in order to, 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 to enhance you know, the interaction between academia and industry, but also government, in order to, to have more uh, productive, let's say, activities. To become that person's that, connection. That's it, that's it. Because uh, if for an academia, uh, for academia sector, for a professor, it is important to, to, to keep publishing, to, to keep, of course, uh, attending some, some congresses, but uh, not necessarily it will be aligned uh, in, a, in a particular, for example, uh, strategy for, for a region or a, or a city um, or an industry. So what is important right now is to, to, to change a bit in order to enhance all these activities, to, to enhance innovation or, or the business sophistication, for example, in Mexico, let's say new activities in order to produce more uh, uh, high-level software, for, for instance, or AI-related products, uh, it's not necessarily the case uh, right now. Again, at the OECD e levels, we are on the lowest uh, uh, rate, at least on, the, on that group. But we can do better. That is, that is because, we, because all, all our activities necessarily are aligned in a, in a better way. Right now, we have the opportunity to revise this and in order to enhance new activities. And I think um, if we have, let's say, 10% uh, 10, 10 of these activities, we can, we can in just in five years, to reach some other levels. And uh, just, just changing all these KPIs, it's maybe, it's maybe something simple, but uh, it, could, it, could, it could give us a lot of I hope people in the round tables will think about these, what those KPIs could really be in order yeah. to drive that five-year prediction. And the drivers also for, for, for industry. Yeah, yeah, of Why course. Why not in the academia? Because they don't want to Every collaborate level. or... Uh, Enrique, the same, uh, similar. So, like from your academic perspective, you know, mm. highly renowned professor in Mexico, you know, like what, how do you see the academic in Mexico with AI expertise? And like, you know, what, what's their role to, to make this happen for Mexico in terms of AI in the future? Yes, I, I want to start with some uh, information first. That of course. This was prepared by a couple of years ago as an, an AI strategy for Mexico by the British Embassy, Oxford Institute, at Sea Mines. Unfortunately, it was a previous government, so I don't know if this government is going to <laughs> take this into account. And they make this analysis of the readiness for AI in Mexico. And I think it's very interesting because actually in digital in infrastructure, we are not bad. We are from in some aspects from place five to 13. Mm. But the worst aspects, number 35 of 35 countries in OCDE is innovation hmm. and technical skills. <laughs> so basically, I think we need to do more research and development to, pro to have innovation in Mexico and to have better education to have the technical skills. So something that I, wanted, I'm, I was meaning to ask you, actually, in fact, is like, you know, I build my models, I train, you know, uh, systems to the predictions inference, uh, and, and, and something that I just realized, I did my PhD here in mechanical engineering, and yet, you know, when I had, and many of here in, at MIT and other places, you know, you go in GitHub or download a data set in Kaggle, and then just like, kind of like teach yourself a little. So it's, it's interesting to me, like, how much do you see the role of the, uh, kind of like the teacher here, and how much the role of like self-learning here to really drive that uh, capacity to, uh, in, in inside Mexico. So like, do you, do you see that, is the role of the professor to push this, or kind of like the, the teachers, or is it more to push for like students to just go there online and kind of like learn, or both, or like, you know, what's the sweet spot? I think both. I think uh, every time we have more uh, tools for, for self-learning, mm -hmm. I remember my kids going to school and sometimes say, I can understand better from Khan Academy than from the professor <laughs> or the teacher. Nice, yeah. yeah, but I, I, th also, I think also we need the uh, professors uh, and uh, to do research. So that, that was why I wanted to, to say based on these on this, uh, metrics 
that we need, and returning to this idea of the hub, mm -hmm. we need a hub for AI in Mexico. And what I think we need is a national institute for AI. Gotcha. It's incredible that we have, like, i part of one of these centers of CONACYT, national research labs, we have about 30 known mm -hmm. in computing or artificial intelligence. <laughs> We are still working in the science of the past and also in the science of the future. Uh, and uh, as other countries have done, as in Canada, I know, and the UK, they have promoted these research centers as a central hub around which you have uh, universities, uh, startups, and, and we think we, we need that in Mexico, and we are from academia promoting this. We have a kind of a white paper to create this center, and fortunately some legislators uh, like our project, and probably we have a, a law soon to create this center. <laughs> so watch out for the new <laughs> institute. That, great, great, thank you so much. And I, I guess finally in this uh, little round, uh, Jose. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, by the book, the answer for the government is, uh, what is the role, is uh, define and instrument uh, public policy in order to create these hubs or ecosystem for uh, develop uh, artificial intelligence. But in the first moment, we have to uh, coordinate the different kinds of initiatives, projects, efforts, the different kind of actors are developing now in Mexico. We have a lot of uh, talent, we have a lot of uh, good initiatives, but the main problem is that there are uh, very individual efforts. We don't work in, as a team, as a coordinate uh, system. Of course, it's a complex uh, system, but we have to uh, establish a general program, general strategy, national strategy that includes the vision and the needs of the private sector, of course, uh, academic uh, sector, government, uh, uh, civil society, in order to establish a a shared vision, a shared vision and general vision about uh, where is the place uh, that the country have to, to go. In a, a second moment, we have to uh, work a lot in the concept of uh, popularization of science, of technology, because uh, one, uh, uh, the, the most part of the population don't uh, uh, be aware about the transcendence of uh, this uh, issues and in a specific if uh, you uh, make the question that you made at the start of the panel uh, the Mexican population in general probably the answer uh, in, a, in a highly percentage is no we don't need uh, artificial intelligence because it's a, a thing that, that is not related with me or with the possibilities of uh, have more, uh, better conditions of, uh, of life. Uh, we have to, uh, in the first moment, that the Mexican society is aware about the opportunity, the challenge, the, the negative impacts even about this uh, technology. But uh, the most important thing is that we aware about this, about this uh, mega trend uh, that we don't uh, uh, have a stop. Uh, that things uh, gonna happen if we make something of if we don't make uh, nothing. And the best way is have uh, the preparation and the plan for try to identify the way that we can take advantage of the benefits and try to reduce the negative impacts in, in Mexico. I think that the, the, the main role of the government is lead this process. It's a transformative process in the Mexican society and I think is the main activity, including the part of coordinate the, the efforts of the actors and try to involve all the society in this process. Yeah, I think that actually echoes a lot of what Miguel is doing and uh, you Enrique, so like combining really, you know, creating these institutes or these uh, frameworks for, you know, everybody to chip in. And uh, well, uh, we're actually gonna start questions, but before that, I really appreciate you being here. It's has been fantastic talking about like this general and more specific healthcare and kind of like politics. It's been great, so please uh, help me. Um, thank the world. Uh, now we have two, 11 minutes for questions, so, you know, uh, we have one there. Hello. 
My name is Giovanni Rebolledo. I live in Tokyo. I do research in artificial intelligence in the University of Tokyo. And I was the first uh, Mexican to be in the Singularity University. Um, I want to, uh, don't take it personally, but uh, fact checking uh, uh, Spanish speaking people is 437 according to Google. Uh, LANIA, Laboratory of National Intelligence Artificial, is, uh, was the first uh, laboratory of artificial intelligence in Mexico. <clears throat> and personally, I think the Chinese model is self-centered and is contributed to, to a lot to the climate change. And it's a model that Mexico should not follow. Um, <clears throat> I live in Japan and I have seen so much synergy and the collaboration that goes almost automatically uh, across all the sectors uh, from private and public. And this is a coordination that goes uh, from the top of the government to the uh, top leaders like Son San or like the CEO of SoftBank. They, they want and they are pushing for putting Japan as, as the leader of uh, AI in Asia. Just thinking about, for instance, in Mexico, uh, what it would take, in your opinion, to make this synergy together, to Mexicans work together uh, in a synchronization, and to have a leader that leads the, the steps and projects the future uh, that everybody should go through. Well, what is it needed for Mexico to does this to happen? Thank you. Anyone that wants to respond? Like how to create a new vision fund in Mexico or like an Elon, like a prismatic leader? Um, well, <laughs> they're gonna kill me, but I'm gonna say it anyway. <laughs> I, th I think well, there has to be trust you know, across all the different sectors. There has to be openness across all the different sectors. There has to be willingness across all the different sectors so people really get invested not only in participating you know like let's say we 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 form a team here it's like we all gonna set up a goal and we all gonna work together regardless of, of our differences bringing together our, our own very specific expertise to uh, achieve a common goal. If I join a team like this, and I'm just gonna take advantage, you know, like okay, well, I'm gonna make a, a really good business here, so I'm in. You know, and then instead of keeping an eye on a, a common goal, and that's what the, you know, the Jap Japanese people are a really good example of, of what what it means to put aside individual needs. You know, and, and put the, 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 the common uh, need and, and benefit, you know, ahead of, you know, my, my individual benefit. I, I think that's, that's something that we, need, that we need to look at. You know, like, if we, I, I believe that Mexico can do it, but we, we need to work together. We need to have a clear goal. We need to ag acknowledge, you know, they have a, a, a clear path work together, trust each other, and honor that trust. You know, because maybe all of them can trust me, but then I'm just gonna screw them, you know, because I'm just, I'm just in for the business. It's like, no, it should be that if trust is, is you know, given to me, I should honor that. You know? And that's something that we need, we need to learn how to do that in Mexico, you know, and learn from the Japanese, because I, I, I think they're, you know, they are, uh, a great society. Fantastic, very insightful, uh, Ernesto. Just, just to add a little bit, I uh, agree with you. Uh, mm -hmm. I will also add that structurally, mm -hmm. first, this needs to be at the national level, not at the state level. We're doing Jalisco at the state level, and we, we are uh, uh, advancing a lot, but uh, in order to, to uh, absolutely have that uh, leadership as a country, this needs to be at the national level, but also this, this needs to be uh, uh, with the government participation, but not not led by the government in turn. This needs to be uh, led by by the civil society somehow. But, uh, uh, they, we mentioned the industry, the universities, because it, this this needs to resist the changes of government that in Mexico sometimes are very wild from one side to the other. Mm -hmm. So this needs to be an organization that is a little bit. Uh, uh, 
protected from, from uh, government ideologies or, 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 or trends. Uh, but definitely at the national level and with the strong participation of, of civil society, which is how we developed the, the high-tech industry in Jalisco. A strong organization in the civil society, which is called uh, Cadillac, that started about uh, 25, 30 years ago and has been uh, immune from the state government and has been developing that. And this, the state government in turn learns about that and then participates. But let the, let, let the society uh, uh, lead this. Yeah. Well, obviously, we, we need people like you. Anytime. Uh, because we need prepared people. We need people who challenge facts. And congratulations on your accomplishments and, and on being able to use Wikipedia for fact checking. Thank you. And uh, we need people who is trained abroad in the best places that comes back and have the character to fight our fight with us. That's, that's what we need. We need character. We need national um, spirit, but also Latin American spirit. We don't need uh, someone who be judging from, from, from the safe place. So that's why we need you and many people who come and fight these battles with us because it's easy to fight when you're protected with a great army and, 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 and the uh, air carrier and things like that. But, but if you're in the ground fighting these battles against um, all these countries that have all these tools, that's, that's a real challenge. Mm -hmm. So, and it's not one person who is going to change this. Mm -hmm. It's all of us. Mm -hmm. So, thank you. Thank you, Gustavo, and thank you for... Uh, that's, uh, we, we actually need to move to... The, well, okay. Yes, just very quickly, I, I, that's why I'm here. And also, I have companies in Mexico, startups, and, and I'm pushing, even if I am Japan, and helping the, uh, Mexico as much as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, please. Hey, hi again. Ruth Mondragon from the municipality of San Andres Cholula in Mexico. Uh, I would like to know if, like, right now, how our government works in the different lev government levels, like municipal, uh, state, and then to the federation. What will be the perfect model, or like how it needs to work the a uh, the artificial intelligence in our country? Like who need to get the lead, or how could it work in order to make it work? Because there's like a lot of topics that we know it doesn't work that right. Anyone has the magic model? <laughs> <laughs> No, no, of course, there are not <laughs> the magic model and it's very complex because there are a lot of actors with different uh, kind of objectives and different uh, priorities and uh, all uh, have to align their uh, objectives in order to collaborate and reach uh, major objectives. It's clear that in a system that, uh, so big and so complex, uh, nobody uh, for their own uh, means can uh, get the uh, successful uh, by their own. Uh, in Mexico, we have a, a, a very good opportunity this year because uh, at least in the uh, regular, re regulatory uh, parts, because we have to uh, uh, create a new general law uh, from science, technology, innovation that uh, uh, establish the basis of coordination between the different uh, levels of government, between municipalities, state governments, and federal government, and the participation of the private sector and the academic sector in the uh, decisions of these uh, sectors, in the definition of the public policy, and the intention of the final intention of create this law that Mexico uh, uh, ha has not uh, now, because we have a federal government now, a state government, and uh, there are a lot of difference between uh, them. Uh, the, the opportunity is create uh, just one big uh, law that establish very clear what uh, competence uh, has every level of government and what uh, uh, mechanism can use for coordinate this kind of efforts between different actors, not just in, in between the level of governments, uh, but with the uh, private uh, institutions, academic institutions, and the society, uh, social, uh, <laughs> civil society. Sorry. Perfect. Uh, so, in fact, I encourage uh, everyone here to that is interested in potentially helping shaping that type of policies to approach uh, our 
uh, panelists at some point and can like help on that effort. And with that, uh, we're gonna be sharp on time. Uh, I really want to really, really thank you. Super insightful. I, I, I think it's an amazing, been an amazing panel, and thanks so much for coming today. Thank you. Thank you.